Let's get to our five headlines. All right. As mentioned, uh, dueling town halls last night, I, I, I thought Trump performed pretty well, despite the extremely aggressive moderating, if we can call it that, by Savannah Guthrie on NBC. Uh, once again, of course, Trump, Trump gets the kind of hostile questioning that Joe Biden has never, ever received and will never, ever receive. But I thought Trump was disciplined, calm, focused. Uh, I thought it was good. I, I would love to see, we talked about this yesterday, I would love to see this version of Trump and only this, at least until election day. That's what I would love to see. I don't expect it, but that's what I would like because I thought it was, it was uh, very effective. And what that meant is the left had to go elsewhere for controversy because they couldn't get it from Trump. And so they decided to focus instead on a woman sitting behind Trump who was nodding. Yes, this was their focus. A woman nodding. She was the target of leftist rage. Uh, and, and here she is. You can see her there nodding. Look at her with her nodding. How dare you? Who are you to nod? Who do you think you are nodding? This is, this is what, I, you can go to Twitter and type in nodding, okay, and search for it. And you'll see hundreds of tweets from people condemning the nodding woman and trying to dox her. Find out who she is. Punish her for nodding. Liz uh, Garbus, for example, Liz Garbus, a, a, a Hollywood person, I don't know, some kind of actress or something, uh, she confessed to feeling, quote, a lot of rage about the woman nodding. Can you imagine? Can you just, you know, I, I continue to be so impressed by the ability of many of these leftists to get angry about stuff, especially when I get angry about things all the time. You know, that's my thing. I get it. But even I, I'm left in, in, in awe and admiration of their ability to get angry because they get angry about things that I wouldn't even dream. I couldn't even conceive of being angry about them. I don't know how to do it. They need to teach me. They've achieved a level of, of petty anger, anger that is, that is uh, you know, it makes me look like an absolute novice in comparison. So I can't imagine watching a town hall and just sitting there stewing at her nodding. Stop nodding. Ah! I can't, I just, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I can't understand it. But this is what rage, I feel rage that the woman was nodding. Tom Nichols um, called for journalists to find this woman, uh, find out who she is and punish her. He didn't say punish her, but that was implied. In fact, Tom Nichols, as you can see, I, look at this. He tweeted angrily about the nodding woman dozens of times. He spent hours without a hint of irony. This was not performance art. This was, he was really, this, this is how he decided to spend his Thursday night. Finding out who the woman is who's, who nodded at Trump and destroy her. And then the media started doing news articles about it um, until finally she was identified. They, they, they succeeded in finding out who she was and they identified her. And, um, and, but, you know, the, the thing that set them off, obviously, is it's not just that a person was nodding. Now, if that was like a white guy behind there nodding, then I think they probably would say nothing about it. It's that she's a black woman. How dare a black woman indicate any sort of agreement towards Trump? She's not allowed to. It's not permitted. This is the leftist mentality. Black people are ours. Women are ours. Latinos, racial minorities. They belong to us. You belong to us, is the message that the left sends to people in those demographics. Uh, they, they think they own them. And if, 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 if they stray, if they get out of line, if they misbehave, well, the left is going to punish them severely for it. This is the mentality. It's sick. It's twisted. It's deranged. It's, it's crazy. Um, the way they react, it's like, it's like they, they, they really do react like they have been personally betrayed. When a black person, black woman especially, because now you have the intersectional, you got two, two intersectional points here. Black woman um, indicates at all that, that she might not be a leftist. They react as though they have been personally stabbed in the back and betrayed by, like that person owes them something and they are not getting what they are owed. 
Number two, how about some positive news for a change? Um, honestly, this news made me, made me very happy. Just wonderful stuff here from the Daily Wire. It says, enrollment rates have declined for undergraduate students at colleges and universities across the United States, and much of it can be tr- attributed to fewer freshmen choosing to attend, according to a new study released on Thursday. Figures from the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center, Center show that uh, first-year students have enrolled in colleges at a 16% lower rate than first years in 2019. This group of students account for 69% of the total decline in the national undergraduate enrollment rate, a figure that currently stands at a 4% decline. The data also shows that community colleges have been particularly affected by the decline, experiencing roughly a 23% drop in enrollment rates. Um, Doug Shapiro, executive director of the center uh, of uh, what center? Some center I just talked about. Oh, the National Student Clearinghouse, told the New York Times in an interview that community college enrollment during the Great Recession actually increased and called the declining rate in 2020 enrollment data staggering. I fear that many of those students will never go back. Well, look, I got nothing against community college. So uh, this is, uh, I think community college has a real role. So this is nothing against them. But as far as the four-year universities experiencing this drop, we can only pray it continues and, uh, and that many of them are bankrupted and destroyed. That's my dream scenario. Dozens and dozens of these godforsaken institutions boarded up, abandoned, and we can all gather and hold hands in a circle around the abandoned buildings, dancing, dancing the night away. That's, that, is my, that is my fantasy. Um, and why would I feel that way about them? Well, you know, no reason except that these institutions are financially bankrupting generations of Americans. Um, forcing them, not forcing them, but uh, duping them into paying for the privilege of being brainwashed. In exchange for being made poor and in debt, they'll also make you confused and deluded. That's the deal. And so, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I would, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the idea of, of, of them suffering enormous financial consequences for that. Now, number three, let's move on to this from the Daily Wire. Here's a story to prove my point about the last thing we just talked about. It says the University of Minnesota's School of Social Work and, and Continuing Education series recently hosted what they called a special webinar series that was titled, quote, Deconstructing and Decentralizing Whiteness in Practice, a three-part series, in which a lecture titled Recovery from White Conditioning taught white people how to use a 12-step program similar to Alcoholics Anonymous to recover and reclaim our full humanity. Okay, Um, I can't even read any more of this. So it's a 12-step program to overcome being white. I I know we're so used to this by now that we're numb to it, but let's really focus on the fact that they are treating whiteness like a literal disease, like a sickness. And they're doing this while claiming that there's no racism against white people. No, there's no racism against white people, you diseased demons. That's the message. Number four, Stevie Nicks of Fleetwood Mac, um, enjoying a bit of a career resurgence because of that video of the guy skateboarding and drinking juice. That's all it takes these days. Has now come out and credited her her career success with her decision to murder her unborn child. Uh, In a recent interview, she says, quote, abortion rights, that was really my generation's fight. If President Trump wins this election, and puts the judge in he wants, she will absolutely outlaw it and push women back into back alley abortions. Side note, by the way, uh, the Supreme Court is not going to be outlawing abortion. If they overturn Roe v. Wade, then it goes to the states, and it will still remain legal in many states, you know, California, New York, many of the most populous states it will remain legal in. Uh, Anyway, if uh, if I had not had that abortion, I'm pretty sure that there would have been no Fleetwood Mac. Perish the thought. There's just no way that I could have had a child then working as hard as I worked constantly. And there were a lot of drugs. I was doing a lot of drugs. I would have had to walk away. And I knew that the music we were going to bring to the world was going to heal so many people's hearts and make people happy. And I thought, you know what? That's really important. There's not another band in the world that has two lead women singers, two lead women writers. That was my world's mission. You know, I have to say, there are no good reasons to kill a child, ever, period. But this reason, that you had to kill a child in order to ensure 
that the world is not deprived of Fleetwood Mac. This has to be perhaps at the top of the list of the really bad reasons. She's saying she killed her child so she could do drugs and make money. I'm sorry, work hard. I I like how she lumps in, you know, I was working so hard back then uh, and doing a lot of drugs. Working hard and doing drugs. Somehow to me, those seem like mutually exclusive Pursuits, don't they? I mean, either you're you're at a point in your life where you're doing a lot of drugs, or you're at a point where you're working hard. It it doesn't seem likely that you're doing both. But regardless, um, that's why she killed her child. How do you think she's feeling about that decision now? I know how she pretends to feel, but how does she actually feel? She's seventy two years old, childless, alone, not married, has no children. Plenty of money, sure, and uh, some hit records, all of which are decades old. D- does the money keep her company on those long, cold nights? Will the songs she's, she's already sung a million times give her comfort as she lives out her final years on this earth? It, it's just impossible to believe that a woman at this stage of life would still feel great about killing the only child she ever had for, for, for success that's now gone and fame that has faded and fun times that are all mostly in the past now. It's just, there's no way. You are alone with your past success being your only legacy. I mean, who cares about Fleetwood Mac? Who cares about Fleetwood Mac now? Who's going to care about Fleetwood Mac 50 years from now? I don't know about you, but but I, I know how she feels about it. I would trade Fleetwood Mac's music in a heartbeat for her child, if I could. Number five, Dr. Fauci now says that we may have to bite the bullet this year and um, sacrifice Thanksgiving. This is him talking about that. Listen. Because that's such a sacred part of American tradition, the family gathering around Thanksgiving. But that is a risk. You may have to bite the bullet and sacrifice that social gathering unless you're pretty certain that the people that you're dealing with are not infected. Okay, in fairness, he did have that qualifier there. He says, Can- cancel Thanksgiving unless you're sure nobody is sick. But there's always that vagueness to it, right? Uh, and then it comes, and, and, then, and, then, and then eventually it's, no, 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 it's banned. Never mind. So that's the way it's always worked. Like 15 minutes or uh, 15 minutes. Might as well, they might as well have said 15 minutes. 15 days to slow the spread. They said, hey, it's only 15 days. You know, give or take. This is 15, it'll be 15 days. Oh, but Dr. Fauci, what happens after 15 days? Well, you yeah, know, we'll see. We'll see. I, it, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it could be done at 15 days. Who knows? I know this tactic because I use it with my kids. And they're finally starting to catch on that if they ask me for something and I give them the, maybe, we'll see. Sure, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And then I, especially if I add the qualifier, uh, maybe, yeah, uh, you know, it's, if there's time at the end of the day uh, to get ice cream, well, we, we, we might do that. Sure, maybe. That, they've realized that that's just a no. That is a no in gestation. That is no in its embryonic phase. Um, and that's, uh, that's what we're getting from Fauci. But in this case, uh, the good thing is, you know, that I don't personally give a damn about Fauci's opinion of my Thanksgiving plans. It makes no difference to me. I'm not canceling Thanksgiving. I'm going to have Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. And I'll tell you why it's my favorite. Very simple. Lots of food, no presents. I don't have to give presents. I don't have to receive them, which is also a great burden for me because I have to pretend that I like it, all the presents I get. Um, It Just get rid of all that and just get right to the food. That's all I care about these days. When you're a child, holidays are about presents. When you're an adult, it's really just about the food. That's Who cares about the present? Um, so it's my favorite holiday. I'm not going to be canceling it. And uh, we're going to be having Thanksgiving. We will not be wearing masks. And we will not be practicing social distancing. Uh, and we're just going to be, you know, we're going to be normal people having a Thanksgiving celebration. And But, you know, in fact, I'm not going to be forcing anyone to attend. That's the other good thing. So I, I was, I'm not going to go and abduct anybody off the street. And, and make them sit at my table, uh, you know, under threat of, under threat of murder w- with a gun pointed to their head and stuff cranberry sauce down their throat. I'm not going to do that. We will hold off on that aspect of our normal tradition this year, which means that anyone who's at Thanksgiving with me 
they chose to be there. They chose to take on the risk, which I think is is, is not a very enormous risk, but um, they chose to take on that risk for the sake of turkey and gravy, and I think it is a gamble worth taking, personally. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.